Okay, we're going to pick up with chapter 18 and talk about the internet basics. So in this section, we want to be able to describe the internet and its components and identify tools for managing threats when using the internet. Some of this is probably going to fall under the category of, uh, no kidding, Miss Smith, we already know this, but it's a good idea to have a bit of a refresher. So the internet. Uh, the internet is a global computer network. It connects many computer networks, allowing information to flow freely around the world. People access the internet through their telephone lines or digital subscriber lines, DSL service, uh, which provides a high-speed connection. Other high-speed connections can be established over cable or ethernet connections. These connections are possible through modems, which are devices that uh, devices used to send data from one computer to another. The World Wide Web is part of the internet, uh, sometimes simply called the web. It's a system for accessing, changing, and downloading a large set of hypertext linked documents and other files located on computers through the internet, connected through the internet. Hypertext is a computer language that allows internet users to access stored images, texts, and other files. It enables direct links to related text, images, sound, and other data. The internet is not owned or controlled by any one person or country. The World Wide Web Consortium, W3C, is an international association in which member organizations, a full-time staff, and the public work together to develop web standards. The group oversees research and sets standards and guidelines for many areas of the internet. More than 500 organizations from around the world are members of W3C. The web connects sources of information. However, there are too many websites for people to visit. To access the information they need, computers use web browsers and search engines. So a web browser is a program used for displaying and viewing pages. The inclusion of design, graphics, and sound on the web pages make it more enjoyable to surf or search for information. So a web browser um, that we're familiar with using on our MacBooks would be Safari, Chrome, Firefox, and if you're on a, uh, a Windows-based computer, a PC, then Internet Explorer. A search engine is a computer program that can include, sorry, that can produce a list of documents related to a given topic. Users find information they need by giving the search engine a keyword. The search engine then sifts through countless web pages and creates a list of documents related to the keyword. And some search engines that we use most commonly are Google and Naver. And of course, we tend to use the word Google as a verb, as in we can Google that. As we've discussed before in the advertising section, uh, part of advertising is also being able to pay the search engines money that when certain keywords are listed, either their page comes up first or towards the top of the list, or they are given an ad space on the right-hand side or part of the banner for that page. So then there are intranets and extranets, not to be confused with internet. So unlike the internet, an intranet is closed to access by the public. An intranet is a computer network used by an organization. It works like the internet, but its access is restricted to authorized users. A company might keep its employee directory and code of ethics on the intranet. An extranet is an extension of the intranet of a company or, or organization. It gives authorized users controlled access to the intranet. This semi-private network allows more than one company to access the same information. With an extranet, Companies can share information and collaborate. So then we have to talk about managing technology threats. So privacy and security th risks are threats to users of computer technology. A hacker is a person who illegally gains access and sometimes tampers with information in a computer system. Internet, internet users are especially open to security risks. To avoid privacy and security threats, do not click on pop-up ads unless you know and trust the company. These ads may not be secure. Companies use software to track computer users online. Many websites that users visit send cookies to their computer. Cookies are bits of information about a computer user that are stored on the computer's hard drive. 
The information is accessed by a server when the user revisits a web website. Users who visit online stores can have their personal information stored even if they do not buy anything. Some, company, some computer users see cookies as a convenience. Others see them as an invasion of privacy. Those who do not want their companies do not want companies to store and use their personal information must reject or delete cookies. I sometimes find it to be pretty convenient. But then I can also see how it's an invasion of privacy. A computer virus is a program that can insert copies of itself into a computer without the user's knowledge, often damaging stored data. Viruses are a program for computer users. They, do, they may do little harm, or they may destroy computer files. A worm is a special virus that invades a computer network and multiplies itself as it spreads throughout the network. Security programs such as antivirus software protect, protect against different type of viruses. New viruses are created every day, so updates of antivirus software must be installed regularly. Spyware is software that tracks what a user does on the internet. Users can download free software or buy special software to prevent spyware. Some software packages offer several kinds of protection. Software packages can protect users from other types of security threats. A firewall is a computer software that prevents unauthorized access to a system software, to system software or data on a user's computer. It acts as a security wall between your computer and the internet. Firewalls can also reduce spam. Spam, as we all know, is unwanted email. A security breach occurs when someone manages to obtain unauthorized access to your system. Finding and fixing the security breach can be time consuming and costly. It seems as if every day we're hearing about some new virus or some new um, hack that has happened that has caused customers to have their information stolen. Identity threat theft is a very common concern. So as a company, it is the company's responsibility to do whatever it can to provide a safe environment for both their technology um, within the company and then also their websites to not be uh, hacked or abused in any way. Okay, that concludes what we're going to do with Chapter 18 on, on technology in the workplace.